Now welcome to another Let's Talk Some Star Wars, where this time we'll be taking a look at and discussing the results of the poll that asked you, how are you feeling about the upcoming game Star Wars Outlaws? As usual, I'll also then be reading and responding to some of the comments left on the poll, and so let's get right to it. Where we'll see that only 1% of voters said it looks amazing and or they're extremely interested in playing it. There was then 6% who said it looks pretty good or they're very interested in playing it. Another 24% said it looks okay and or they have some interest in playing it, which left 24% to say it looks pretty bad and don't have much interest in it. And then a final 45% that said it looks terrible and they have zero interest in playing it. And though I was prepared for this to probably not get the most positive results ever, I'm not sure I expected it to be quite this bad. I mean, it looks like about two-thirds of voters have little or no interest in this game, or don't think it looks very good at all. Which is kind of crazy to think because this is an open-world Star Wars game, right? This is something I think many of us have waited a very, very long time for, or have wanted to get and to play for a long time. Seems like a game like this should be a dream come true for many fans, and yet maybe not so much, at least for those who voted in this particular poll. As I always like to point out, a different channel may of course get very different results than I did. And so to find out why so many people who voted again in this poll seem to be uh, less than excited for the game, let's get to some comments now. But not before once again just saying thank you to everyone who votes, comments, and watches these or any of my videos across both the channels. Also a huge, huge thank you to those who support what I do over on Patreon. Thank you so much for that. And now on to the comments where we will, as always, begin with the top rated comment left on the poll, which this time came to us from Alex Pearson who simply said, I'm not even considering it until it's been out for a while and real people are reviewing it. Disney has lost me as a, it's Star Wars, I buy automatically customer. And I like that you said real people because, and mind you, I have not really kept up with this game or news around it all that much. I haven't really been super excited about it myself, to be completely honest with you. But I have heard something about Ubisoft paying for positive reviews, that they even flew people out to Disneyland, kind of whined and dined them essentially and then let them play the first few hours of the game, and then of course had them go and do reviews on it. And mind you, I'm not saying this sort of thing isn't kinda commonplace or even standard practice these days for all sorts of things, not just video games. Nor am I saying that it means those who got this early look and uh, special treatment, that they automatically put out glowing or positive reviews, but certainly they were um, encouraged to be kind towards the game or felt perhaps a bit obligated to uh, say nice things, especially if they want that kind of treatment again in the future. And though, no, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with this being done, you could argue it's just a form of advertising, really. Especially in the day and age of social media and influencers, of course companies are going to try and use that to their advantage, and of course most influencers are going to eat those perks up. Can't really blame them too much, I suppose. I don't think many would turn down being flown out to Disneyland and having a nice time there. I just think that if you do get to do something like that, if you are flown out to play a game, essentially, you should make it very clear when you review it. And maybe they did, I don't know. But I think you should make it very clear because the people who are potentially paying $70 for the game should know if your review was uh, bought or not. And like I said, maybe they did that. I don't know. I haven't really been paying all that much attention to this game, and I'm not even sure I'll be playing it. At least not right away. There's a ton of old Star Wars games that I've really, really wanted to or been meaning to go back and play. Either again, or in some cases for the first time, there are some I have never played. And that just sounds more appealing to me than this game, to be, again, completely honest with you. And that's not to say that I think it is going to be horrible, it could be a really good game, we won't know until, again, real people get to play it. But to talk more about all of this, let's get to this comment now from Earthbit, who simply said, Ubisoft, that's all I need to know. There was also this comment from Josh, who said, To be fair, this isn't a Star Wars issue, it's a Ubisoft issue. All their games seem to follow the same grindy, shallow formula with poor storytelling, slash character work, 
and a mediocre gameplay loop. Not even putting a Star Wars skin over it can make that fun. And I think this might just be kind of my biggest issue with the game. It looks like something I have seen and or played before. Keeping in mind, I don't play a ton of new or current day games, and I just don't know how exciting it's going to be to, you know, kind of run around and do missions to grind rep with all these underworld factions, and to run around Star Wars planets just because they're Star Wars? Or to fly in my ship and get into dogfights with TIE Fighters or whatever else it might be? I mean, kind of the problem is I've done all those sorts of things before in games, many, many, many times before at this point. Heck, I did that 20 years ago when I ran around massive open worlds in the game Star Wars Galaxies, which still feels like one of the most unique MMOs I've personally ever played. I didn't just enjoy it because it was Star Wars and it was cool to play Star Wars. In fact, I had a lot of friends that played it with me despite not being Star Wars fans at all because of the interesting kind of leveling system and the crafting system, which was kind of very cool and complex, and that it was just a fun game to go out and explore in. The planets were massive. Or you could just sit in a cantina and tip a dancer, or maybe do a little dancing yourself. Anyway, setting that game aside for now, but it does lead me to the question of what actually makes Outlaws unique? What besides it being an open world Star Wars game sets it apart from all the other open world games like it? How is this game actually innovative, or is it innovative at all? Is it anything truly new and different? Does it stand apart from other games in the genre? Or is it just because of Star Wars that we're all supposed to be super excited and go out and buy it and play it? And if you take all the Star Wars iconography away, would anyone actually be excited if this were, say, set in its own brand new setting or franchise? If this were its own thing, would people really care all that much about it right now? Basically, does it only use Star Wars like a crutch, or can it stand on its own? And I'm not saying something can't, shall we say, be made better to a degree because it is Star Wars and it leans into all the lore, and or is an example of something that I feel is fantastic all on its own, but is kind of made even better by being in Star Wars. I think it fits into the universe perfectly without over-relying on the universe to sell it to be interesting, if that makes sense. This game, however, and maybe I am dead wrong about it, I have obviously not played it, and as I admit, I haven't really kept up all too much on it. I've watched the trailers, read some of the news, and so on, but it feels like it's supposed to be interesting or is being sold because it's a Star Wars game, not because it is a great game all on its own. And hey, if that is all it takes for you to maybe enjoy it, if that's all you really care about is being able to play Star Wars, then more power to you, I guess. But going back to that first comment, I think a lot of people have stopped being auto-buy Star Wars fans, which I think is a very, very good thing. I think they, Disney, and anyone else who wants to make a Star Wars game, for example, like Ubisoft here, they need to know that fans actually demand quality. We do not just buy because of the logo anymore. We don't want to be taken advantage of because, again, you slap Star Wars on something and say it's going to be cool because of that. Or because you reskin a game we've played or seen before, and say, now this is on Tatooine, and you can go do a mission for Jabba the Hutt, and you can dress up like Han Solo for a few extra dollars, that is. Which then brings us to this comment from Jack Baraka, who said, Don't care how it looks, I'm not paying over $100 for a video game. And well, technically the base game does only cost $70, but of course you don't get the whole game for that price because there is a season pass which gets you two extra missions for like 30 more dollars, which to me is kind of hilariously crazy. I mean, kind of doing some math here, unless they are some pretty long and elaborate missions, I don't understand how you charge roughly 40% of the base price of the game, and that base price of course includes everything, probably dozens upon dozens of missions, right? So how do you charge 40% of the base price of the game for just two more missions? I mean, the math just does not work there. Shouldn't those two missions just be, oh, I don't know, included in the price of the game? Or at most be like $5 extra or something? Wouldn't that be more comparable to how much more playtime you will get out of the game? And the sad part is that many will indeed pay that extra $30 or whatever it is because of the fear of missing out. 
or they want to get the whole game and don't realize it's just really a scam. That they're just withholding a part of the game in order to charge you extra, that there's no good reason why they are doing that beyond just their greed. All right, and let's do one final comment here, and it comes to us from Ripping Bag, who said, Thor, I'm really looking forward to this game. I think there is significant negativity around it due to everything else going on in Star Wars today. All of that negativity being well-deserved, by the way. When a company like Lucasfilm has so little care for their product that they take a character like Vanestra Rowe and establish her as a day one character in the High Republic that young girls are hoped to identify with, only to turn her into a sniveling bureaucrat who frames her friends to protect the Jedi, and I'm assuming herself. It becomes evident why everything Star Wars is viewed with negativity and suspicion. Still, I'm hopeful this game will do well. And I think you are touching on one of the biggest problems between these companies like Lucasfilm and Ubisoft that, shall we say, own or get to work on the things we love, like Star Wars, and the fans of them which is they don't know how to form good relations with their customers. They don't know how to, or maybe they don't really care to, how to earn our trust. We're completely unwilling to give them the benefit of the doubt because of their constant track record, because of how greedy they are clearly being, and how often it feels like they are just kind of half-assing things or treating us like auto-buy customers or auto-buy Star Wars fans who will just buy it because, again, of that logo. I mean, they don't even care about how clear and in plain sight their greed is. They, Ubisoft in this case, they have zero shame in charging an extra $60 for the ultimate version of the game, which gets you what exactly? Those two missions that really should be included in the base of the game, as well as a bunch of in-game looks that, honestly, should be unlocked through gameplay, not through real-world money as well as you get a digital art book? I mean, digital, not even a real physical art book? Not that it would make it worth the extra 60 bucks, but at least it would be something you would be able to, you know, have in your hands. And there were games back in the day that would, of course, also have ultimate or collector's editions that would, you know, actually give you some pretty cool physical stuff. But now they want you to pay for digital stuff, and at the same time, tell you that you should get comfortable with not even owning your games anymore. It's just kind of crazy and sad what's happened to this industry in, I don't know, maybe the past decade or so. It's sad how greed just destroys everything and all too often replaces the passion to create. Well, that's all I got for you this time. Now it is your turn to take to the comments below and tell me what you think about Outlaws. Are you going to be playing it? Are you going to maybe wait and see how it is or wait till it goes on sale or what? Either way, whatever the case may be, leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.